Hi, I'm Charles Kuntz, and I'm one of the surgeons at South Paws. I'm a specialist surgeon, which means that I've received extra training after vet school in the form of an internship and a residency, which allows me to call myself a specialist and gave me uh, specific training in doing advanced surgical procedures. My dad was a cardiovascular surgeon, a heart surgeon, and he started cardiovascular surgery probably in about 1970. Uh, he inspired me because in 1974 he did a sequential 300 uh, human patients uh, cardiovascular surgeries without a single intraoperative death. And that was actually a, a record in the United States at the time. And so from the beginning of my uh, undergraduate work, I knew I wanted to, to be a veterinarian and I started working at the vet school um, as a, a volunteer initially and then as a paid employee doing work for the surgery department. While I was there, I got to meet a lot of the, you know, the real masters of the field of veterinary surgery at the time and got to, to learn about all different aspects of uh, veterinary medicine and surgery. And from that moment on, it's like something clicked and I started making straight A's, um, doing really, really well on my clinical rotations and, you know, and apparently made a good enough impression that I was uh, awarded an internship at the uh, Animal Medical Center in New York City. The Animal Medical Center is a huge hospital on the Upper East Side of New York, which is nine stories high, has 95 doctors on staff, and we used to see an average of 65,000 appointments per year. Uh, from that point, I got a surgical residency at uh, Virginia Tech, and I started looking at um, uh, where my area of interest would be specifically when, within surgery. With my dad's uh, background in cardiovascular surgery, I did my master's uh, thesis on cardiac surgery and cardiopulmonary bypass in dogs. So when I finished my surgical residency, I did a year as a cardiovascular research fellow at Auburn University. And then, uh, and, and that was a year that my wife and I were apart. And she ended up going to Colorado State University as an instructor, as a part-time kind of locum position. While I was there, the Surgical Oncology Fellowship at Colorado State University came up, and that was a very, very highly sought after prestigious position with uh, the cancer, uh, Animal Cancer Center at Colorado State University, which is the biggest and most well-known cancer uh, unit for animals in, you know, in the world. Somehow I managed to get that job and it just started uh, this amazing uh, relationship and lifelong love of treating cancer in animals. South Paws is an amazing place. You know, you, when you walk in the front door, you just get this vibe that everybody's really happy to be there. It's a fun place to work. Um, you know, in the back when, when uh, things get a little bit lighter and not quite as busy, people are always laughing and smiling and having a joke, but we also know uh, when it does get busy and when it's time to, to get to work, we can all buckle down and, and get the job done. There's not a lot of stress or tension, and so uh, a lot of our long-term patients that come in for radiation therapy or repeated visits for another reason just really seem to, you know, enjoy being there and they run in tails wagging. And, so I have two Labradors named Miles and Hugo. They're 10 and a half years old, and they're basically 10 and a half year old rotten puppies. Um, they're beautiful dogs. They come to work with me most days, and um, they're very cheeky, as most Labradors are, in that if somebody leaves a loaf of bread in a drawer that's not padlocked, um, they'll manage to find their way in, and, and you know one of the staff will come upstairs and find them halfway through um, uh, a loaf of Helga's. The best part of my day would, uh, and I know this sounds corny, but it would be just, you know, just coming to work. Um, I really enjoy uh, the interaction and the team environment that we have, um, and I honestly, you know, I love coming to work almost every day. From, you know, the time I walk in and say hi to everybody in the morning to having rounds and seeing how well our patients are doing from the day before to meeting my clients uh, that, that um, are the family members of the pets that we're going to operate on on that day. We do that until about 11.30 in the morning to the minute that I get to put on my scrubs and know that I'm going to have an exciting day of surgery coming up. Uh, the other really nice part of the day is, is you know, proudly handing over the cases that we've managed and that we've you know, treated all their problems over to the overnight staff and knowing that they're, again, in great hands overnight and uh, that there's going to be a really good continuity of care. If it's surgery, South Paws can do it. Uh, we do anything from orthopedic surgery soft tissue surgery, cancer surgery, neurosurgery, thoracic surgery, cardiac surgery. South Paws is just an amazing place to work. Um, it really is a dream come true for me to have a team of 20, 25 different staff 
members and we're all completely unified in our compassion uh, for animals and our desire to alleviate suffering and improve quality of life. Um, the, the big difference of South Paws is that we have a huge uh, staff to patient ratio and that means that every treatment is administered on time and all of the, the hygiene issues that uh, come up with working with animals are completely taken care of. A lot of people have commented to me is that when you walk in the front door it doesn't smell like a vet clinic. It doesn't smell like anything. It's basically a you know human hospital level of um, of of hygiene and equipment and safety and care. Uh, what came out of necessity turned into actually a really good idea. Um, most dogs are either in runs or in cages, and at Southpaws, um, again because the practice grew much much more quickly than what we expected we ended up having patients out on the floor on blankets and then we had the idea why don't we just put tether points there and so instead of having dogs in runs or in cages the majority of them are actually out on a bed and in, in, uh, on the floor. What that does is it makes the pet feel like they're at home um, and that they're not in you know in a confined environment and it also gives much more access uh, to the nursing staff so that they can uh, administer all the, the treatments um, appropriately and easily. Neurosurgery at Southpaws is um, kind of a, a, a pet passion of mine, but about uh, 10 years ago we bought uh, one of the first CT scans for animals in Australia. And one of the things that happened with um, having a CT scan is that we started getting a lot of neurological cases. And as that caseload increased, I started recognizing that there were some patients that perhaps weren't being treated because they had tumors that were too big or in locations that were unusual um, or something like that and so I started trying to push the envelope with what we could do with neurosurgery. As a result we've removed some really really large tumors with some great long-term survivals. We have um, developed some new surgeries for the treatment of epilepsy in dogs. Um, we do now spinal surgery. We've probably done about two and a half to three thousand spinal surgeries. Um, we've developed new ways to manage lumbar sacral disease in dogs, which is kind of like sciatica in people. Um, and what I love about neurosurgery is that, um, number one, it's, it's pretty techy. I'm a, I'm a bit of a nerd, and so I love the, the use of the CT scan um, and you know, the magnification and that sort of thing. The other thing is that it's very precise, and so you have to completely focus yourself on the patient and your movements are absolutely critical as far as the precision is concerned and I really enjoy that. And the other thing is that uh, the outcome for most cases is really, really good and so it's very rewarding and often you'll have a patient that comes in dragging its back legs because it's paralyzed. We do a, a spinal surgery on it and it may be walking with a, within a day or two. Uh, I was in Camberwell seeing consults and at the end of the consult I explained to the, uh, the client that her dog didn't need any surgery and that we were just going to try some medication and she looked at me frankly and said, how do you make any money? And I said, well, what do you mean? And she goes, well, your consults are free, you know, and I expected you with a free consult to push me into surgery and that that's how you made your money, but you didn't charge me for anything. And I said, you know, the, the, the idea is to get the best possible outcome for the patient. And what I like about it is that I can have people come in and with just questions about um, you know, what's going on with their pet or what might be available and for them to know that I'm going to give an honest opinion and I'm not going to be biased about what's going to be best for my wallet or best for the practice. Um, I want what's best for their pet. We're really lucky in Melbourne because the general vets are, are uh, by and large really, really competent and most of the patients come to me with a diagnosis already made. So basically I just need to sit down with them for 15, 20 minutes and discuss what options are available.